Faith here with your welcome toast from a diet journal. Day one, I have removed all the bad food from the house. It was delicious. Faith Middleton with Chris Prosperi for a special edition of the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze in our home at Gateway Community College in New Haven. The second you can't think of a word, do you say to yourself, is that the start of dementia or Alzheimer's? That is a scary thought. I've had that thought many times. Is there a way to prevent the brain from deteriorating in some areas? Well, according to my guest, The answer is yes. We've discovered a new and fascinating book by a neuroscientist who specializes in the brain and how it functions. We're learning a lot about how the brain is changed by the food we eat. This has huge implications, as you can imagine, for people with a brain issue, such as a stroke, Alzheimer's, concussion, and anyone who wants peak brain performance and clarity at important times. It might be test-taking, athletic competition, public presentations, uh, I don't know, a competitive work environment, and on and on it goes. Maybe you just want to be at your best as often as you can. It turns out that there's this growing body of evidence that the brain has its own appetite, if you will, and requirements to perform well and heal well. So to our surprise here on the show, some of those needs, according to these rigorous studies and brain scans, show that the brain's food and vitamin and mineral requirements can be a little bit different even from what the body needs. It's its own thing. Now, you can, it turns out, from what we're reading here about all this research and what my guest has done, you can specifically target brain health and make a difference in how your brain performs and heals. The implications here cut a whole new pathway to improve health and human performance, as you're about to hear. Think about the many forms, as I said, of dementia, Alzheimer's, stroke prevention and treatment, overall clarity. I've spent, uh, personally, two years recovering from a concussion, and I'm still working at it. I was rear-ended by a driver on I-95, and believe me, I have read every word in this book, and we will make this book available to you as a thank you gift for supporting this show and everything you enjoy on Connecticut Public Radio. You'll hear us giving the phone number, the web address. You don't want to miss this conversation. These studies affect us all. The book is called... Brain Food, The Surprising Science of Eating for Cognitive Power by Lisa Moscone. Quickly, Dr. Moscone is Associate Director of the Alzheimer's Prevention Clinic at Weill Cornell Medical College in New York and also an Associate Professor of Neuroscience in the Neurology Department. She holds a dual Ph.D. in Neuroscience and Nuclear Medicine from the University of Florence in Italy. She is Italian-born, and you'll hear that in her voice, which this is a sound that I love. Dr. Moscone, welcome to the Food Schmooze. Thank you so much for having me. How much research is out there, including your own, showing that certain foods have a very positive effect on brain health, brain healing? How many studies? Is this so new that there are few? I think there's quite a bit of research, and it started about five to six years ago that people really realized how diet, exercise, sleep play such a big role for Alzheimer's prevention. Our research was important because we were among the first to really start uh, to look into diet specifically and using brain imaging. Dr. Moscone, key question before I go to the scans that I'm looking at in your book with Chris Prosperi. If you already have the damage of, say, a Western diet, or you are already showing early signs of aging through uh, memory issues that are a little more advanced than normal, or whatever it might be, can you reverse this after you've already begun to show signs? Yes. There are clinical trials showing that engaging in brain-healthy activities and preventive strategies actually are able to reverse the brain shrinkage 
age, for example, that naturally occurs uh, over can, time. i got to go to page 16 in the book that we're talking about, Brain Food, The Surprising Science of Eating for Cognitive Power by Dr. Lisa Moscone. I'm going to paint a picture for the listeners. So I'm looking at two different skulls, the brain imaging from two different human beings' brains. On the left, you say, you can see the brain of a 52-year-old woman who's been, because of her culture, on a Mediterranean-style diet most of her life. You say her brain looks great. It's exactly how you want your brain to look when you're 52. The ventricles, this is a section of the brain that looks like a little butterfly in the middle of the brain. They're small and compact the way you want them to be. The hippocampus, which is the memory center of the brain, is well-rounded in close contact with the surrounding tissue. I can see this with my own eyes in the scan. Right, Chris? Yeah, yeah. it was now, amazing. Now, here's the other one, the Western diet, which is what we all eat. The right picture shows the brain of a slightly younger 50-year-old woman who's been eating the Western-style diet through her life, and this means what everybody turns to in this busy world, fast foods, processed meats, dairy, refined sweets, sodas. The arrows you look at are pointing to a brain that is showing atrophy, meaning shrinkage of the brain in the skull, an indicator of neuron loss. And as the brain loses neurons, I'm quoting you, the space is replaced by fluid. And you can see it. It shows up as black on this MRI scan. There's a lot more black in that brain than the other person who's been on the Mediterranean diet. These, you say, are all signs of accelerated aging and increased risk of future dementia. Now, this is what we're all trying to understand. Why are so many people getting dementia? It's not just that we're living longer, is it? Is it that we're starving our brains? In part, yes. We're not feeding our brains the right nutrients that the brain really needs to be healthy and function and age correctly. There's a lot more inflammation, for example, associated with the Western diet, and that really has a terrible impact on the health of your brain cells. I think a lot of people, if you have any irony or cynicism in your, in your brain, you would say, oh, my God, inflammation is the new buzzword. It's the new kale salad. As scientists, we're very concerned about inflammation. It is a genetic term. Pretty much anything that goes wrong in your body promotes inflammation. But I think what's really concerning is when your brain develops inflammation. The brain is very delicate. It's the most delicate organ in the body. So the brain is very, very vulnerable to inflammation and oxidative stress. In oxidative stress, I think people know the term free radicals, mm -hmm. right? When you smoke, yes. you, you have a lot of free radicals inside your body. The same thing happens inside your brain. It's sort of a rusting effect that makes your brain age faster. And that's mm -hmm. really a big concern in neurology, and we need to find strategies to reduce the inflammation and to reduce this oxidative stress that is so harmful to your brain. And food plays a huge role in that. It can trigger inflammation. It can reduce the inflammation. Uh. Yeah, some foods are pro-oxidants. Some foods are antioxidants. The Western diet is very rich in foods and nutrients that are pro-inflammatory, whereas other diets like the Mediterranean diet, for example, contain a lot more foods that are anti-inflammatory. When I'm looking at these brain scans, I see this is not some kind of Mediterranean prejudice we're talking about here. I'm looking at real <laughs> research in your book, which is easy to understand. It doesn't talk down to anyone at the same time. You're looking at the brain. We're going to take a break in a second because I want to tell people how to get this book it is so fascinating. This one's important to me. And you've got recipes even in here and instructions about vitamins and minerals for the brain to promote healing, clarity. Do you do tests where you start testing the memory of people on Western diets that, that many of us eat versus the Mediterranean diet and actually see that the, the memory does not function as well? Yes, it's exactly what we do. We run a clinic where 
we give patients recommendations for Alzheimer's prevention and diet and nutrition are a huge part of the recommendations that are being given. So we will scan people when they walk in the door and then we repeat the scans a year and two years later and we can see the changes in their brains. You point out in the book that even among, let's say you're talking about people over 50, but even people under 50 are affected by the diet stuff in their brains when you look at the scans. So yeah. this is for yeah, everybody. Yeah, talking to me. Yeah, me yeah, too. that's what I said because, when I saw the picture. Um, my background is really biology. I trained in neuroscience. That's biology, genetics. It's all about your DNA kind of thing. And I never thought that I would start working in nutrition, but it was my research that actually convinced me that that was the right thing to do. You mean that you were thinking about our inherited genes, our DNA and all that, and then you started to see things that convinced you to get into this field? Yes, for sure. There are some patients who develop Alzheimer's when they're very, very young. The reason they get Alzheimer's is that they have genetic mutations in their DNA that literally make them get Alzheimer's disease. But this is very rare. It's like 1% of the population. Mm -hmm. For the other 99% of the population, the risk of Alzheimer's is not determined by genes. It's not caused by genetic mutations. It's much more about an interaction or an interplay between your genetic background and everything else that you do in your life. Wow. That's what I'm reading in your book, and it's just blowing my mind. Dr. Moscone, please sit where you are. I'm with Chris Masberry. <laughs> We're talking with neuroscientist and associate professor Lisa Moscone. Her book is Brain Food, The Surprising Science of Eating for Cognitive Power. Her research and brain scans show the brain's ability to heal and operate at peak performance based on the foods, vitamins, and minerals that the brain specifically needs. You take them in, get away from some of the Western stuff, and it actually shows up in the scans. I heartily recommend this book. And we will, of course, send this book to you. I chose it for this period on purpose. Of course, I hope you will become a member. But I'm into this book for my own personal reasons, recovering from a concussion. So for a contribution of $10 a month or a one-time contribution that comes out to $120, we will send this right to your door. And I am with Robin Doyen Aiken. And Robin, the phone number is 1 800, toll free, obviously, 1 800 584 2788. What do you think, Robin? Listeners, run to your computers right now, put in your browser, foodschmooze.org, click the red donate button in the corner, and order this book immediately. Who does not want to have their brain at peak performance at any age? If we can do something to stave off Alzheimer's, let's do it. You know, you see people in doing infomercials and saying shark cartilage <laughs> is the answer to This is a neuroscientist who is, didn't even want to get into this field, but the brain yeah. scans showed her that the brain changes with these things that we're talking about. A She's direct even correlation. Got, it's really incredible information. We're going to get into specifically these omega-rich, omega-3 rich foods and what Dr. Moscone's research is showing about that. The number here to get this book sent to your door, I highly recommend it, <laughs> is 1-800-584-2788. You're going to be surprised about what's coming forward in this next conversation about the brain needing fat, the brain needing a particular kind of sugar. And I, again, will get with Dr. Moscone and ask her, if you have early onset Alzheimer's, can this help you in any way? We'll get to all of that or or some form of dementia. There are so many forms, brain injuries from athletes and uh, my car accident, no matter what it is. Chris has had a, con- a very serious concussion, too. So here we go. The number 1-800-584-2788 to have us send Brain Food, The Surprising Science of Eating for Cognitive Power by Dr. Lisa Moscone. Or go to foodschmooze.org, and foodschmooze is F-O-O-D, obviously. <laughs> Schmooze is 
S C H. Like, N- sh- like school. N O O Z E. I'm spelling it out for you because I don't know the state of your brain right now. You know, (laughs) you might actually need this book immediately. What was that again? (laughs) Foodschmooze.org. And and also coming up, along with some of this science talk, there is some deliciousness coming up as well. Mm -hmm. Because like any good book, Brain Food has a collection of recipes that you can kind of experiment with even. There might be some Mm -hmm. ingredients in some of them that you are not used to eating for Mm -hmm. brain health. A Mm -hmm. lot of people are used to eating heart-healthy foods. I mean, that's a thing. We know all about that. But not a lot of us know about brain-healthy foods, but Mm -hmm. we're about to. You know, when we talk about $10 a month, I have to say that is really, these days, a kind of couple of cups of coffee. So we invite you to do that unless you don't want to be bothered every month and want to do a a one-time contribution. Chris made one of the recipes in the book because you might be saying to yourself, we're going to get into this. The trouble is, I think the Western diet is engineered to be wildly delicious. And when people start talking about the fish and the this, that, and the other thing, and you just think, hmm, well... Dr. Moscone, i got to hand it to you because Chris made these Sicilian scrambled eggs, the recipe in her book, and we went wild at lunch just now. So there is a way to make this stuff delicious by combining all the Mediterranean ingredients. Turns out this Mediterranean diet stuff is real, but what do you hear about the role of water? What do you hear about the role of these omega-3s that are in fish and what this actually does to our brains? I'm telling you something. If I'm having a major exam this has right chris oh, this has yes. now con- yeah. convinced me or a performance test yeah. i would eat this way you know even for yeah. the test i would eat this way for a month so i am at my brain is at peak performance but then you say to yourself why wouldn't for clarity why wouldn't i eat this way all the time yeah. And there's a way to make it delicious. Mm -hmm. Uh, Robin, go ahead. 1-800-584-2788 is the number to call to support our show and everything you hear on Connecticut Public Radio. You're going to be surprised because glucose is important for the brain. It's one of the most important things we're going to find out. And that means something, a sweetener like honey And I mean real honey, not junk honey in the supermarket. Real honey. And it has stuff in it the brain really likes and promotes all the stuff we're talking about. So I, since reading this book, within an hour of finishing, ran out and got real honey and had the best time this morning putting it in my tea, on my toast. I was having a ball thinking, I'm supposed to do this for my brain. I think I'm functioning on this show. My brain loves honey, too. (laughs) (laughs) In other words, it's not all just boring food. You can have some good stuff. All right, 1-800-584-2788, a month or a contribution one time of $120. Bring your charge card to the phone. It's so easy, or you can go to our dedicated pledge page at foodschmooze.org, red button in the corner on the right-hand side of the homepage, and you will see Dr. Moscone's book front and center on that pledge page. We are so grateful for your support. Thanks. I'm Faith Middleton, and we continue our conversation now as promised. Thank you if you called, by the way. I'm with my uh, buddy and senior contributor, Chris Prosperi, who's a chef and co-owner of Metro Beast Restaurant in Simsbury, Connecticut. Chris, as a chef, how is this striking you? I'm fascinated by what we're missing or what we need. And you're trained as an engineer. And I'm trained as an engineer, and I have a science background. And I know heart healthy, like Robin said. I know all that. We're taught that at young ages, what we should eat, what we shouldn't eat. But no one has ever started talking about brain food and what our brains need and that we might be, without a better word, starving our brains. If you're just piling into the show, 
Dr. Moscone is a neuroscientist, associate professor at Weill Cornell Medical College in New York, founder of the Nutrition and Brain Fitness Lab at NYU School of Medicine. Her book is Brain Food. You should see the brain scans in this book and her way of talking about this and how the foods we eat sometimes, the supplements we take, the water we drink, really changes brain performance. Looking at the actual research really convinced me the brain differences really just blew my mind. I must have, I have a million friends with either early onset Alzheimer's or some form of dementia, some kind of brain injury, who are struggling, have had strokes, all ages. These are people at all ages. So let me get to foods that are rich in something called omega-3s. Now, they also can have omega-6s in them, which isn't so great, or maybe a little bit of balance between these two, optimum, and really changes the brain. Can you address that? The human brain contains a good amount of fat, and some of this fat needs to be replenished daily. In particular, the human brain needs a kind of fat that is called polyunsaturated fat. That includes the omega-3s. And the other kind of polyunsaturated fat that the brain needs is the omega-6 fatty acids. So you need it in combination? Are you saying you need it in combination? Yes, you need both of them, but the ratio is really the important factor. And the reason for that is that the omega-6 fatty acids are pro-inflammatory, whereas the omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory. The omega-6 fats are important because they protect you. They're part of the immune system. Really, when there's a virus, an infection, the omega-6 allow your immune system to to mount an inflammatory response Ah. that gets rid of the problem. At some point, you need to be able to stop the inflammatory response once the virus or the pathogen or whatever it is is getting rid of. So the omega-3 are needed to balance out the omega-6. The problem is that Western diets are pro-inflammatory. They contain 10 times or 20 times the amount of of omega-6 relative to the omega-3, whereas a good ratio would be more like 2 to 1 or 3 to 1. So if you're not a scientist... How do we know what has what? Well, I know from your book, from reading your book, what to do. So would you please explain what you think we should be doing? One possibility is to increase foods that are rich in omega-3. Tell us what those are, that, the good guys. Yeah. What are the, what and are the, the good and guys? what the bad guys are, too, so we can <laughs> avoid them. Fish. Fish is the best source of omega-3 fatty acids that your brain needs. Fatty fish like salmon, trout, herring, bluefish, bluefish yes. but also very cheap fish like sardines or anchovies. Those are very good sources of omega-3s. Huh. I learned in the United States that a lot of people don't love fish. It's very strange as an Italian, you know, for us, mm. fish is like something to really look forward to. <laughs> mm-hmm. But not as much here. So if you don't like fish or if you're allergic to fish, then there are plant sources of omega-3s. And these are olive oil, flax seeds, almonds. Uh, also a very good source. What about, Chris, you asked, what are the bad guys? And and why is there so much of it in our diet? Mm -hmm. The bad guys are really processed foods. Um. So processed food, fast food, deep fried food. And also the research says that too much meat and high fat dairy is bad for you. Uh, That's our diet. Because (laughs) meat, I happen to love meat. So do I. And I certainly don't want to head toward an early dementia or Alzheimer's. I see what you're talking about, that this is why Mediterranean cultures have basically meat once a week. Yeah, once or twice a week, and the the portion size is much smaller than in the U.S. Mm, Also, another difference that I find funny is how in Mediterranean cultures, people don't eat eggs for breakfast, whereas... ah. In the United States, a lot of people eat eggs, and they eat a lot of eggs. Once I went to a restaurant, I got 
scrambled eggs, and it was like 10 eggs. <laughs> yeah. I was like, uh, oh, my God, this is enough for a month. People don't realize that a normal omelet in, like, a diner can be a six-egg omelet. Yes. So <laughs> it's insane. But Dr. Moscone, yeah. as a neuroscientist and doing all the research you have on the brain and showing the effects of food on the brain and dementia and Alzheimer's and all this business, you are in favor of eggs as a source of what? Clean. Choline. So there's, yes, eggs are good for you. I think we just abuse of them. <laughs> we just eat too many uh-huh. as a society. But one or two eggs a week, I think, is perfectly legitimate. A week? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little bit more I, than we if have. If I could have two boiled eggs a morning, I'd be happy. But you're, you're saying for some people <laughs> that's too much. So the choline in the eggs is helpful for the brain? The brain wants that? Yes, wow. yes, yes. yes. Choline is a nutrient that's been kind of overlooked. Choline is a very important B vitamin that serves a very, very specific function in the brain. A B vitamin. The brain needs it to make a specific neurotransmitter. The neurotransmitters are the chemicals that your brain cells use to communicate with each other. They literally bounce from brain cell to brain cell carrying information. And choline is particularly important for memory formation. Oh, this is what happens in America to us. We hear something is the thing and it's going to help my neurotransmitters communicate better. And so I'm suddenly going from two, three eggs a week to I think I'll have a dozen. Six a day. Because it's going to be good. (laughs) Is it too much choline? Can you overdose on choline? The brain is a very special organ and it's very highly protected. It has um, the barrier that literally prevents anything from getting inside the brain huh. unless the brain itself is calling for it. Ah. So there are gates, yeah, there are gates in the barrier. They open and close when the brain needs specific nutrients. When the brain needs clean, it will open the gates and get whatever clean you have in your bloodstream. The gates will close and the brain will do whatever it needs to do with that. Oh but my if the God. brain doesn't need it, it just won't get inside your brain. And We're, that's the same for pretty much wow, all nutrients wow. except for water. Where does it, so you obviously have determined from your research and looking at the research of other people that, say, three eggs a week is enough for the gates opening Two. and the brain. Yes? Two is enough. <laughs> Two, sadly. So sadly, <laughs> too. three. <laughs> like with her recipe that we did the eggs this morning, they were chuck full of things. It was a scrambled egg dish, but it was mostly vegetables. How many but eggs? How many it was eggs? one egg per person. It was six eggs that served six people. So you say in the book, Dr. Moscone, that there is a new diet known as MIND, M-I-N-D, the MIND diet. M is for Mediterranean, D is for dash, and if your doctor, as my heart doctor has suggested that I go on the dash diet, (laughs) um, you know what that is. So it's both Mediterranean and dash, and dash is kind of Mediterranean-centric anyway. So it stands for, M-I-N-D, Mediterranean dash intervention for neurodegenerative delay diet. And these are the core principles, you say, three servings of whole grains plus a salad and one additional vegetable every single day along with a glass of wine. That's not so bad. (laughs) If you are an alcohol consumer. Okay. Yes. To clarify, this is not my diet. This is a diet that was developed in Chicago uh, at the Rush Institute and is now being tested for Alzheimer's prevention. So it's a diet that is really interesting to us. And it's a combination, like you said, of a Mediterranean-style diet with the DASH diet, which is the kind of diet you would want to follow to prevent and also to treat hypertension. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of two approaches that are good for the brain and for the heart. So what I think is really valuable about it is then some people would be like, well, I was not born in Italy or in France or in Spain. Uh, We don't have access to the same foods. What do I do? You know, how hard it is to follow a Mediterranean diet and how expensive is it? And this diet really makes it easier. And it's more like, okay, today you're going to have three servings of whole grains, a glass of wine, two different veggies, and then you can have a piece of chicken or a piece of fish 
but it, it doesn't really specify what kind of foods and ingredients. It's more like um, a roadmap to a Mediterranean yeah, guide. style. Mm. It makes it a little bit less foreign. Hmm. I wanted to talk with you on the other side of this, this being that I'm going to compliment <laughs> you. Your recipes in this book are unbelievable. So stay with me, Dr. Moscone. This is fundraising. I purposely chose this book. I just find this research that she has done extraordinary and enlightening in terms of how the brain works, the barrier opening yeah. gates and not opening gates, and that I can improve my thinking capacity through exercise, through water. We didn't even get to that yeah. yet. Where do you hear how much the brain needs water, according to Dr. Moscone? And it's cool to understand how it works. Yes. So the number is to get a copy of this book sent to your door. Of course, it's toll free. 1 800 584 2788. And here is our senior producer, Robin Doyen Aiken. Or while you're on foodschmooze.org, poking around looking for recipes, something to make tonight, I want you to click that red donate button in the corner and you will see Dr. Moscone's brain food front and center on that pledge page. Food Schmooze listeners are among the most generous listeners on public radio. You donate regularly, you volunteer your time, you cook for and entertain lots of people. We know this. This book is your opportunity to be generous to yourself. Give yourself the gift of this book so that you can take a seat at our table for many years to come. One eight hundred five eight four twenty seven eighty eight. You're awesome. Okay, <laughs> it's so the number to call. Oh yeah. All right. So coming up in our next segment with Dr. Moscone, Chris, there is a trick up the sleeves of people like her. She is a neuro nutritionist. We're going to talk about her recipes in this next segment. If you can join us at the $10 a month level. We would be happy to send you this book. We want to continue. There, there are bills, as with anything. We want to continue bringing you everything you love. We have local programs on this station. We know we love our national programs, but the local programs give us a sense of place. What's going on in our world? We're talking about where we live. We're talking about the Colin McEnroe Show and the Food Schmooze. So no matter what contribution you would like to make, we are so appreciative. 1-800, toll free, 584-2788. But if you're a kind of internet type person and you want to see things, and Robin, <laughs> come, on, come on, lay it on me, Robin. Food schmooze. Dot O-R-G. And schmooze is S-C-H-M-O-O-Z-E. Please go there now and pick up this great book. Yeah. We do this because people will say to me, I love listening to the food smooths. <laughs> and that is actually the correct Yiddish pronunciation. Of course, that's not what we say in uh, American Yiddish. So there it is. We're knocked out by this book. I went out based on her glucose strategy and bought a very amazing medical-grade honey you don't have to go that far. You can just go to your farmer's market and get a local honey as opposed to the corn syrup filled honey that is often in the supermarket in the bear container. The brain, it turns out, needs sugar, and that is really good news. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so 1 800 toll free 584 2788. Coming up in the book, why water is important. And then her recipes for the Buddha bowl. Oh, we love those. Avocado toast, one of my favorite things. I love avocado in the morning. Boy, what that's doing for your brain. And a cacao smoothie. And she talks about cacao tea. And I thought, oh, I need to switch. <laughs> I need to switch from my chai tea to cacao tea. All that coming up. 1-800-584-2788 is the number to call to support the Faith Middleton Food Schmooze and all of the local shows you hear on Connecticut Public Radio. We do hope that you can make that call right now. Thanks. You've got to fight, fight, fight for your mind. 
I'm Faith Middleton with my food buddy, Chris Prosperi. We are talking with, as you might know, the neuroscientist with a with so many degrees <laughs> that it just blew my mind. Oh, my God. So I read her book with just the keenest interest because we think that the high numbers of people who have memory issues, some form of early dementia, Alzheimer's, and all that stuff. It's all because of age, because people are living longer. Well, when I read this research, I think, oh, no, actually, it's something else. This is uh, early in the research, but it's significant enough at this point, Chris, that, wow, I'm convinced. So, Dr. Moscone, a lot of nutritionists and doctors talk about exercise, and it feels delicious to be a couch potato. (laughs) So, So, you say, study after study is showing that leading a sedentary life makes your brain age faster. The memory centers of the brain are known to shrink in late adulthood, leading to impaired memory and reduced mental sharpness. Many teams have reported that this shrinkage is much more pronounced in the sedentary elderly. And you say, Dr. Moscone, that when my colleagues and I looked into this, we found Similar results in people who were in their 30s and 40s, indicating that the sedentary life, this is harmful to your brain regardless of how old you are. Can you talk about it? It is clear now that genes are not your destiny and that aging is not a linear path to dementia. Whether that's good news or not good news really depends on where things fall for you in other respects, like lifestyle. It's true that it's early research, but I think there's consensus among scientists that at least one-third of all Alzheimer's cases could be prevented by improving our lifestyle. And that means improving cardiovascular fitness, intellectual stimulation, and, of course, eating better. You know, in some ways, scientists never agree. (laughs) <laughs> it's really unlikely for, for scientists to really come together and say prevention makes sense. Mm. Especially in the medical field, we're trained to react. Nowadays, the focus is really on prevention. What can we do to make sure that huh. we don't get a problem in the first place? Yeah. This, I think, is a very radical shift. It gives a lot of hope. It allows you to be in charge you can actually take action now and try to avoid problems down the line. So exercise is is very important in that respect, just as much as diet is. And as a society, we need to learn to eat for our brains. We're comfortable with the idea that we feed our bodies, but we're less aware that we feed our brains too. And the foods we eat, yes, they do change the way we look, but they also really change the way we think. You know, in other cultures, say in where the Mediterranean diet is um, more healthful, according to your brain research, they're not sitting around the table saying to each other, oh, let's have a meal that is so healthy for our brains. (laughs) No one's saying that. They're just enjoying things. They grew up with these things. They understand the taste of bitter broccoli rabe and hot peppers and garlic and olive oil. And uh, Here's what I say, Dr. Moscone. If I can take the Mediterranean diet and boost up the parts that I love, like extra feta, maybe a little extra olive oil, Pepper the, flakes, the, the pepper right? flakes. Yeah. The things that I love to get me down that path, I will do it. What do you think of that? I think that's great. <laughs> the, the omelet's okay. a perfect example. So in the book, Dr. Moscone has, the neuroscientist has, avocado toast. We have this on our website, by the way, foochmoose.org. There is a rainbow Buddha bowl, which is a thing, with maple tahini dressing because there's your glucose we're going to get to in a minute. These peanut butter power bites and the soothing cacao smoothie. Uh, you talked, Dr. Moscone, about the smoothies and cacao tea, which made me go crazy. Cacao, of course, is chocolate. For dessert, you say, 
think glucose. <laughs> Who says in this day and age sugar yeah. is bad? Everybody so, says sugar is bad. Yeah. Okay. So what are you talking about? I'm a neuroscientist, and I think the first thing you learn in school is that the brain needs glucose for energy. So the brain is the most active organ in the body. It uses more energy than any other organ. Whatever you eat, 20% of the body's total burn goes to the brain. Wow. Yeah. And what's really peculiar about the brain is that it relies mainly on a specific kind of sugar called glucose for energy. So 99% of brain energy is derived from glucose. 99? Usually. The average person who eats a normal diet and doesn't have any particular pathologies, then 99% of your wow. brain energy comes from glucose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Glucose is needed for the brain to actually make neurotransmitters. Wow. We were talking before about the neurotransmitter that is needed to make memory, like choline, so there are other chemicals in the brain that are responsible for everything we do. Like, if you're happy, it's because your brain is making serotonin. Yeah, yeah. If you're moving, it's because your brain is making dopamine. But for anything to occur, your brain needs to make a compound that is called glutamate. And glutamate is made from glucose. It's yes. the only way to make it. If you don't have any glucose going to your brain, your brain will not be able to make the glutamate, so, and you won't be able to move. What are glucose-rich foods? The best way to have the glucose your brain needs without all the side effects of, of refined sugars and bad sugars is to focus on foods that are really good natural sources of glucose. Such as? Honey and maple syrup. You mentioned honey before. I mm -hmm. love maple syrup. And there's sweeteners. Yeah, maple syrup is so good. Mm -hmm. But also grapes, oh. dates, kiwi fruit. And a lot of veggies are great sources of glucose, like the red beet. Ooh, a yeah, small of red beet, yeah, it contains 31% of all the glucose you need mm. for today. So, nice. eat a red beet. So, yeah. here on the show, we did one of those red beet chocolate cakes, yeah. and we were so uh -huh. it's delicious. We were so excited uh -huh. about it. Um, in your book, you have these Sicilian scrambled eggs that Chris made. These eggs had yeah, eggs, of course, plum tomatoes, Kalamata olives that were chopped up, some milk, some feta, olive oil, garlic, baby spinach, fresh basil, a lot of those, a little bit of salt and pepper, and we went nuts. Robin, you said... Uh, you I know. Th I said, I'm good for the day. This was going to hold me now till yeah. dinner. It, it was so filling was and delicious. so delicious. We had one egg per person. All she did was reverse it. Okay. She cut the eggs down and tripled the vegetables, and wow. it was wonderful. Yeah, and I feel so clear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm at optimum brain performance right now. D Dr. Moscone, how long does it take eating, say, in the Mediterranean style, how long does it take to change things? And also, even if you have early onset dementia or Alzheimer's, can you affect the progression of these challenges by the diet? So first question, how long does it take to change your brain? It depends on what's your diet now and mm -hmm. how many changes do you need to make. Mm -hmm. I think in clinical trials, you know, there are a lot of people checking on them to make sure that, that they're really sticking to the diet. Most clinical trials show improvement in six months. Wow. wow. Like measurable improvements, like wow. meaningful improvements. Let me, in let, six me months. let me zero in on people who've already begun to show either memory issues they say are associated with older age or actual early signs of some form of dementia, there are so many kinds, or full-blown early onset of Alzheimer's, can you affect the course? Because I don't want to give people a false hope. That would be so horrible. Can you affect the course of these? Can anything be delayed by changing your diet? I would say this is what we're trying to establish Right now, it takes time to run clinical trials. Mm. Other colleagues are running trials, and I think the preliminary understanding is that diet can help. Once you already have Alzheimer's, I think what diet can do is to slow progression. Mm. 
fascinating stuff. Last quick question. I promised to say something about water. What's the deal with the brain and water? Over 80% of the brain's content is water. Every chemical reaction that takes place inside the brain needs water to occur, including energy production. Hmm. And that means that the brain is very sensitive to dehydration. Even just a minimal loss of water, like a 2 to 4% decrease, which is nothing really, Mm. can cause uh, neurological symptoms like brain fog, fatigue, Mm -hmm. dizziness, confusion. And even worse than that, brain imaging studies have shown that even mild dehydration makes your brain shrink. And you don't want your brain to shrink, no. which is the last thing anybody should, should hope for. Does so it come it back? If, a lot for the brain. If, you, it start, does, if yeah. you start hydrating, will it come back, the shrinking? It will, in a matter wow. of days. I think a major problem in the United States is that many people drink purified water, but that water is not hydrating. It doesn't do anything to help your brain. What's the water we should be drinking? We should be drinking water that is not just fluids, it's not just H2O, but also includes electrolytes. And electrolytes are minerals and salts that dissolve in water and help promote hydration inside the body and the brain. Can you give me an example? Yeah, spring. Spring water. Yes, or spring, even well water, right? Water, spring water, mineral water, yeah. well water, well even water. tap water. Yeah. The problem with tap water is that it's usually filtered. In yeah. many cities, remove every single thing from the water because the water is just not clean. Many filters get rid of the, oh, of the chemicals and the toxins, oh. and, but they also get rid of the nutrients. Oh, no. So, so in this some is cases, so tap water is just not helpful. I live in New York, and tap water is good. I have a water filter at home, and it's a water filter that does not get rid of the nutrients. You want to make sure your nutrients are not being filtered out. That's the point. Oh, my goodness. You, I have learned... More information. In, a, in an hour. This is unbelievable. And if you quadruple it, this is what's in this book. Dr. Moscone, Thanks. you are amazing. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Brain- oh, thank you for yours. <laughs> oh, thank you. So Brain Food is the name of the book, The Surprising Science of Eating for a Cognitive Power by Dr. Lisa Moscone. Stunning. So If you would be able to join us at the $10 a month level or one-time contribution of $120, we would like to send this book to you, Brain Food. If that's not your zone, uh, for whatever reason, we are so appreciative of whatever you can contribute to public radio. Here's our number, 1-800-TOLL-FREE-584-2788. Or you can go to foodschmooze.org and hit the red button on the right-hand side that says Donate, and you'll be led to our Food Schmooze exclusive pledge page where you will see Dr. (laughs) Moscone's book. And I feel so lucky because I just had my first appointment with Dr. Lisa Moscone, and I feel like (laughs) if you you would like to have this conversation with the doctor continue, you can order her book, $10 $10 a month. Think of it as your copay. $10 a month. And Dr. Moscone's brain food will be sent to your home. You don't even have to go anywhere to get it. It will be sent to you. And anytime you have a question for her, just turn the pages. Look oh, it up. Robin. You want to see what foods you should be eating for optimum brain health? Oh. Right there. All right. one 800 584-2788. If I could high-five her at this moment for saying that, I really, I really, really would, because it's so true. Chris, you probably joined me in this. Yes. The privilege of having a conversation with someone who is so smart and um, self-effacing and who has done this, all this research and gathered all these other people's research and who is aimed at one thing, how do I help the world? The book is fantastic. I've read every single word. Every detail you need to know about the brain. No one has a book like this on their shelves right now. This is a whole new ballgame for me. I think clarity, high brain function, drink your water. 1-800, just one more time, (laughs) 1-800-584-2788 
is the number to call to start improving your brain function right now. Do you say to yourself, I'm thinking so clearly right now, I need to call public radio. Sure, we agree with that. 1-800-584-2788. We're on Connecticut Public Radio Thursdays at 3, Saturdays at noon. Weekdays, listen for my 60-second food schmoozes and never eat more than you can lift. In New Haven, I'm Faith Middleton.